This is how to read your training peaks. So first off, this is the annual training plan and I'll send it out to you weekly just so that you can see your progress. How it really works is you have your training plan set up in cycles of four weeks. So every four weeks you'll have a recovery phase. This just works in conjunction with FitDex testing, but it's also just a nice way to set up a program. Most of you guys have almost identical programs just because you're working towards the same events, but of course you're all coming into it with different levels of fitness. So you can see that November is almost done. The gray bars represent the work that has been inputted or is predicted to be done. It's kind of like the recommended, it's automatically tabulated on training peaks, but it's kind of the, recommend, the recommended workload to get your fitness to where it should be for the events. Your fitness, where it should be, is represented by like that bluish wave in the background. That's just based on the training load of the gray bars. And then as you do each practice or each session or workout, the gray bars will get filled up. So for the month of December or in the end of November, you'll see blue filling up those gray bars. So anything you don't fill up kind of gets pushed the next training cycle. And eventually it's just like this vicious cycle of constantly catching up and your fitness score will just not be as high come competition time. So it's really important that you're always making up your training on the day that it's supposed to be planned because it's really hard to make up for any sort of lost training. Life of a high performance athlete, huh? Like I said, this is your ATP. You have two major events that we've planned for, national team trials and nationals. You might be like, but there's so many other ones. So a healthy ATP actually only has one or two events just because it's really hard to like peak you and taper you and peak you. Like it's hard to do that with like six different events. So we pick two big ones that we think are going to be most important for you. And then we kind of just like treat the other ones like training sessions. Like you do what you do, it's whatever. As you can see, you have two major events in June and August. So the loading of your training plan has it so that you are reducing your workload twice kind of towards the end of this training cycle. So it's pretty nice. It's like a full bird's eye view of what your life's gonna look like get ready. So there's a couple of different acronyms that you're going to want to learn about. So TSS, CTL, TSB, and ATL. I'll go through those in detail. Um, have some patience. Let's do this. So this first one is your CTL. This is just your fitness score. This is the one that you're probably going to be the most obsessed with. You just want it to go up and up and up. By the time June rolls around, you want to be at like a 90. Just so you know. So this is an average of your daily training, also known as your TSS score, which is your training stress load. So your CTL or fitness or chronic training load is derived from six weeks of data, 42 days of data. It's your long-term training load, and this is directly related to your training stress load, as I said. So very fit athletes can usually increase their fitness score by five to seven points a week. A hard workout typically results in a TSS score that is about 50 to 100% above your current fitness score. So on workouts, you will see it's a hard workout because it's probably between 75 to 100 TSS. A moderate workout is about 25% above your current fitness score and it's around 60 to 70 TSS. And an easy workout is about 10 to 25% below your current fitness score and usually looks like 35 to 40 TSS. So on your performance management chart, that's that second diagram there, your fitness score is the blue line and then any predicted fitness is the dashed blue line. Um, the next one is your ATL, your acute training load. So this is your fatigue. So it's a rolling average of your training stress score from the last seven days. So steep inclines would indicate large loads and usually results in a negative TSB. If you're doing lots of high training stress load workouts, you'll probably have a high ATL score. You can bring down this ATL score by doing more low TSS workouts in addition to rest days. So we just kind of look at this Make sure it's not going too crazy, but if you are in the thick of training, it's usually pretty high. So the ATL is represented by the pink line on your PMC or your performance management chart. And it's the predicted one is, base, is uh, shown by the dashed pink line. 
okay, this is your TSB. This is basically your ready to race. And you're going to see it on your annual training plan as well that we want to have a TSB that is more positive. So when you're training, typically you're in debt because you're fatigued, you're working hard. So it's usually a negative number. But by the time you get to race day or peak performance, you want your TSB to be about between positive 15 and positive 25. The more positive the number, the more recovered and ready you are. That being said, if it's too high, it probably means you're untraining. TSB is the yellow line on your PMC chart, and of course, the predicted TSB is the dashed yellow line. Okay, I combined these two together, even though they're kind of really not similar. Um, so your RTSS and your TSS. So your RTSS is your running training stress score, so that's basically just running workouts. And then your TSS score is your overall training stress score. So as you can see, I've referred back to your ATP. So in the ATP, we can actually write what we want the TSS to be by the end of this whole entire journey. So then we plan for each week to have a certain workload to have been met. We calculate this training stress usually with heart rate and pace, that's for running, or through heart rate and some other random magic that Training Peaks has figured out. Your TSS is represented by the red dots on your PMC chart and it's calculated per workout session. You want to try to make sure that you are hitting that TSS score. And if you have a watch that shows you the TSS score as you're doing your workout, even better. But heart rate will do too. By entering a weekly average TSS, the ATP can actually automatically calculate and give you weekly TSS targets. It will model your future fitness fatigue and form in this performance chart. So you will most likely be able to see how fit you'll be by race day. And since the TSS represents the workload of a training session and takes both the duration and in intensity into account, it's actually more precise um, and it's, it's a better way of planning than just on duration alone. Okay, these are some charts you can play around with on your PMC. You can see how long you spend in each heart rate zone. You can also manipulate where and when this data is being derived from. So if you click that where I've like made that little circle there, you can actually like pick all of the different criteria. So the date range, like whether it's like biking specific, running specific, it's up to you. But you can refer back to this when you think that you worked really hard in a certain chunk of a workout and you kind of look at this and look at your TSS score and your heart rate and determine if that's true. So the next thing that you're most familiar with is the calendar. So this is where I upload all of your workouts. Um, I wanted to explain really quick, like the green, yellow, orange, and red. So I'm still trying to figure it out. For the most part, green means that you've hit the planned targets and range. Now keep in mind, if I don't enter a whole ton of criteria, it's probably a little bit easier for you to actually hit the green. So green means that you've actually hit within 20% of the planned value. A yellow means that you've completed between 50 to 79% or 121, 250 of the planned values, so above or below the targets. And then orange means that you're more than 50% above or below the planned targets. So sometimes I'll mess up the time and I'll go in and change it, but sometimes you just made a workout too short and that also matters. Uh, red means you just didn't do it, and then gray is any unplanned workout that you've done. It still helps your fitness score, it just means that I haven't put in any sort of criteria for it. Really important when you're looking through running workouts or really any kind of high intensity interval training, look at the workout details. It tells you what zone of running you should be in. This is really going to help and I think will make a really big difference in all of you guys as you are trying to figure out how hard you need to be running for certain pieces. Speaking of running, so these are the zones. This is the final slide. Woohoo, we're almost there. Zone one means just active recovery. It's very low. You really have to work hard at not working hard. Zone two is aerobic, so it's meant for kind of under 90 minute runs. It's long, slow. It's a good long distance conditioning. Zone three is your tempo, so it's comfortably hard. Zone four is where we kind of have challenges. So that's 80 to 90% of our max heart rate. A lot of us are really running way below threshold for workouts where you should be at threshold, if not higher. It's not quite all out, but it's pretty close. And then zone five, B and C, is aerobic anaerobic capacity, and this is like dead zone. It's usually very short intervals, but it's max speed, full effort. And that's it. That's how you read your training peaks data. Hopefully that helps. And just make sure you go and play around with it as much as you can, and just 
really be mindful of everything that's going on, like take an active role in your own athletic career.